Welcome to the Purple Lit Nerd Podcast for July the 15th, 2018. I am your host, the amazingly adorable Rebecca Thistle, podcasting to you live-ish from my new used desk in my apartment, which I call Jeffrey Thistle Work. Yes. So, <laughs> Tyler, we're done, we're done with all the novels. Yay! I say we as though it's more than just me on, on this show, but, you know, whatever. Um... So, now I get to get into, like, the fun stuff. So, um, let's start first with the biggest thing I had to gloss over, uh, through the sake of recording time, because, um, and the app I use to record this show, I, I can only record 45 minutes at a time. And especially as you get into later books, like, 45 minutes just isn't enough fucking time to, to cover everything in these novels, um, which is, which is really cool. So I, I, I had to gloss over a lot of, uh, a lot of details. And I think the biggest thing that really hurt me, um, in, in, in doing so, um, was that of how druidic magic actually works because you know if if, if you've been listening you know I, every time something important happens like oh well Atticus used his druidic juju or you know whatever and he and, and he managed to make this happen but what is what does that quote unquote juju actually entail so i'm i'm going to try and break it down for you how uh, in within the the context and the universe of this book series how that magic actually works so the basic idea behind druidry is that everything on earth and probably in the universe in general but the story takes place on earth so we'll just stick to it everything on earth is held together with bindings. I mean, you know, and, and and this is one of the things that I really love about uh, about this book series is druidry is is almost scientific. It's it's it, it is just this perfect intersection of science and magic because um, I'm no scientist. I'm no great at shakes it <laughs> anything STEM related. But um, I understand enough to to know that uh, chemical compounds and you know elements bind together. You know, two atoms of hydrogen and one of oxygen, and that makes water. You know, and so there's there's something that holds them together. Now, druids are capable of seeing those bindings between you know not not just between like elements and you know components of living things <laughs> but um these sort of non-physical bindings you know, like bindings of love and friendship and trust, and they're able to see those those magical bindings. And the reason they're able to see this is because they are bound to the earth, which is consistently referred to in the series as Gaia. 
Now, I, I have a couple of like little <laughs> questions about that reference. Uh, but, uh, but that's, that's just nerdy nitpicking. You know how we do. So, uh, that's, that is the basic idea behind Druidry is every living thing, they are able to perceive the bindings that hold living things together. Um, synthetic fabrics and stuff, druids can't do shit about because their, their magic and, and the bindings they can deal with are related to the earth. So, uh, this... This ability as a druid allows them to, this magic that they get from Gaia, uh, they, they're, they're allowed to not only create new bindings between living natural things, but to dissolve old ones within reason. We'll get, this, we'll get to that in a minute. So some of these common bindings, I have a list for ones. <laughs> so some of these common bindings are, uh, they're, they're able to manipulate their vision they're, they're, they have a binding so that they can actually see the bindings uh, in, in in the world so the magical bindings um, Atticus calls it fairy specs initially but eventually it sort of transitions into magical sight uh, they are able to uh make do bindings that will allow uh, them to boost their strength and their speed bindings that will allow them to uh, camouflage themselves so what the rest of the world actually perceives just looks like everything else <laughs> I mean if you move too much it kind of looks like a little you know like heat wave sort of thing but for the most part, they're not going to be perceived. Um, let's see, what's some other ones? Uh, there, there's some other ones where uh, Atticus like is able to create a binding to raise his body temperature so that he can survive in cold weather, even without um, you know clothes. And he won't get frostbite or anything like that. Um, he's able to do binding so that he won't fall asleep. It's there's a lot of really cool bindings that show up, and but I think the coolest, of course, are the ones for shape shifting. Every single druid in the history of druidry. Obviously, when we come into the story, Atticus is the only one, but by the end, we've got two more that are fully bound, and then six more on the way, right? Um, but each druid gets four animal shapes. They get a predator form, a hoofed form, a bird form, and an aquatic form. So, for example, I just got a notification on Facebook. That has nothing to do with anything. I just wanted to explain the noise. So, for example, Atticus, his predator form is, uh, it's technically a warhound. But it is the early iteration of what we would modern, in modern times, consider a wolfhound, an Irish wolfhound. So he's able to shift into a hound. That is his predator form. His hoofed form is a stag. His avian bird form is a horned owl. And his aquatic form is an otter, which is just adorable. <laughs> Granuel's forms, her predator form is a jaguar. Her hoofed form is a chestnut mare, if I'm not much mistaken. Her avian form is a peregrine falcon. 
and her aquatic form is a uh, sea lion. <laughs> I, I feel bad for not fully remembering, but, you know, if you've been paying attention, I'm not Grani Whale's biggest fan. Like, I respect her badassery, but I'm not her biggest fan as just, you know, one one woman to another. Like, yes, I respect you, and you're a fierce druid, and go forth and conquer, but I don't like you. I don't like you as a character. I'd probably like you as a human being, but I don't like you as a character. Go away. Stay away from my fictional soulmate. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> back to the back to, to the animal shapes. Um Owen Kennedy, his predator form is a black bear, his hoofed form is a ram, his bird form is a red kite. And his aquatic form is a walrus. <laughs> so that's 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 the fun part. So all this sounds really cool, except okay. So again, this was something I really had to gloss over. And I mean, even with the mysteries, it's it, it sort of gets fast forwarded over. <laughs> the training process for becoming a druid takes twelve years. And in those 12 years, you learn not only about how Gaia operates and the sort of levels of, of you know, uh, earthly hierarchy. You know, you've got Gaia, obviously, is the most powerful and, you know, most supreme power. Then you've got the tectonic plates, and then you've got the elementals. And so, um, so you spend 12 years learning about how Gaia works and learning how to talk to elementals and all that stuff. But, um, you learn three different languages, two or three different languages to create head spaces, which I'll get into here in a minute because I've got it on my list. Um... But you also learn, like, fighting skills. Uh, Atticus, in his training, learned Celtic, Irish Celtic fighting skills. Because this is back in, you know, the first century B.C. Or B.C.E., excuse me. Uh, but he, he learns his fighting skills run you know within that context but because he has lived so long and experienced so much he has learned other fighting skills and so granuel sort of has this advantage that he didn't have during his training where she gets to learn not only the things that he initially learned but in his training period but the things that he learned along the next 2,000 years. So she not only learns these ancient Celtic fighting styles, but these Western European, Eastern European, and various Asian martial arts fighting styles. So you learn how to do that. You learn, you spend a lot, and you spend 12 years learning, which... <laughs> Incidentally, I was, I was thinking about this, actually. Um, oh, it, it was way, way back. Probably about a year, maybe two years ago. When I was first listening to the series. I went, you know, it's really interesting that uh, it takes 12 years to become a druid. And it's a much more intense training process. But it takes 12 years to get a high school diploma, essentially. I mean, yeah, you spend four years in high school, but, you know, you have to do the other eight or nine years in elementary and middle school. So it takes 12 years to get through your basic education, and you don't learn hardly anything. <laughs> so, not complaining. Not complaining, because you can always learn more, but it's just it's kind of an interesting thing. Later on, um, when the werewolves approach Owen about him training up some of these uh, children of pack members, they ask him what would be an appropriate age for starting training, and he says between six and eight. <laughs> 